How many sheep can I have on an acre of pasture? Well, let's see if we can answer that question. Good morning to everybody, at least it's morning to me. I'm trying to get a little bit of work done out here before it gets too hot. And yeah, we're kind of moving forward with the rotational pasture fences a little sooner than I thought. I'll explain that in a minute. We're gonna go up, I got some posts to put in. I wanna show you what I'm doing. Then we're gonna get into how many sheep per acre you can put on your ground. We're gonna go over that. But I wanted to show you something while I'm down here before we move up. What does putting the sheep on the pasture do for you? This ground has had sheep on it now for four years. And I wanna show you, look at across the fence. Now, technically that's still my ground too. If you can look, there's a, another fence about 15, 20 feet over. When we put up this fence for sheep, I didn't really wanna to have to tear down the old fence and the old fence had the bigger holes in it so it wasn't gonna be good enough. The sheep will stick their heads through it. We had to have new goat and sheep fence. So I just moved over about 15 foot, put a new one, left the old fence in place. That way if the neighbor has livestock, we won't be nose to nose across the fence, kind of a buffer zone. But look at the bushes, cedar trees, they've been there for a while, but look at the bushes, how the bushes are growing up, all this growth. And then look here, if we had a small tree, the sheep pretty much killed them. The bigger ones I protected, so try to give them a little shade trees down the line. But all those little bushes like that, they would all be growing up out here in the pasture, except that's part of what the sheep do. They're not only they're eating the grass, they're eating down that vegetation. And yes, they even love cedar trees. And boy, I'll tell you what, they could, there's a couple little ones. They better start getting on those cedar trees a little bit more. All right, We're going, we wanna get into how many sheep per acre. But what I want to do is go up and show you what I'm doing on the fence. We're going to be a little bit, show a little bit more of that than I normally do on stuff. Let's go up there. I'll show you what I'm doing. Then let's go in and we're going to talk about how many sheep per acre. All right, let me show you what I'm doing. I just put the post in. I didn't figure you'd really want to watch me tamp in post. But when I put up the hot wire, I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. So I'll go step by step on that. All right, so here we are. First post in here, sheep come up the alley. There's a gate down there, they access that pasture. This gate's gonna swing back here, allow access to this pasture. And we're gonna go all the way up to those posts there. The very first post back to this post will be a hot wire. And then from that post, we're gonna go all the way down the other end for the next hot wire. That will put off that small pasture. Then there's a next and a next and a next. We'll get into all that stuff later. That's what I'm starting with. Now, two reasons I start a little sooner. One, that isn't a wood post, is it? No, it isn't. It's a four by four. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I live near a town of 30,000 people. It's got a tractor supply. It's got another regional farm store. It's got a Menards, which is like a Home Depot or a Lowe's if you're not familiar. All those places, there's not a wood post to be bought anywhere. Cannot find a wood post anywhere in the country. And the guy at Track Supply, whether he knows what he's talking about or not, has told me Track Supply will no longer sell creosote posts. I don't know. They got their green treated. Here, here is a supposed green treated tractor supply post. All right. This is, I think, a five inch down the ram pin. There's a six inch, you probably can't tell it from here, but it's the crooked post. It's a six inch diameter post, just like this at Tractor Supply Cells. I put it in the ground in 2019, three years ago. It's already broke off at the base. It just rotted away, it's broke off at the base. I could stick a two by four in the ground for three years and the dang thing would still be there. And yet Tractor Supply's wood post rot off in three years. There's my rant for that, so anyway. I could buy four by fours. I wanted to start doing this. So to me, it was supply chain issues uh, is part of it. So I went ahead and I bought the four by fours, started putting in. I do want to get them started rotational. It's not so much for the grass now, but it's for, for now it's gonna be parasites. It's nice and dry, you don't have any. I want to at least get a couple pastures done so I can start rotating a little more often 
try to help work on the parasites. They don't have any. Let's not get any once the rainy weather starts again. So that's why I started earlier. Uh, get a jump on it. Electric fencer units, I found them. They do have them. But I figured, you know what? I probably should buy that too because uh, who knows what I'm going to be able to find if I don't get this stuff now. So the first pasture is going to be done just to put the ewes in it. So that way when I put them in, uh, we can, once I wean the lambs, we'll put the ewes, let them get used to it a little bit. We'll see how that goes. So, all right. And I've been doing a lot of reading and a lot of YouTube in the last week, studying up for how many sheep per acre. Let's get this in. I want to open the gate to let the sheep in, and we'll talk about that. All right. Open the gate, and everybody comes in. They spent the night out in the pasture. So uh, I'm sure they're probably figuring, hey, it's time to find a shady spot. The sun's coming up, starting to get hot. <laughs> time to find a shady spot. So, all right, let me hang this up. Let me get over here. I'd like to stand in the shade if I can. Let me get in the shade here too, hang on. Well, sun went behind the cloud for a little bit, so I'm gonna stay right here for now if I can. All right, how many sheep can you put on an acre? I'm going to give you all the information except for one piece. There's one thing you have to go do. This is not going to be where you can just write it down what I tell you. This is going to be, I'm going to give you an idea, and then you've got one thing you need to do. All right? So let's start with what you need to do. Let's start with that. And that is, you need to talk to someone at your local extension office in your county. There you're living. Reason is, I mentioned this in another video. It's all over. Everything's different everywhere you go. What state you live in, what county you live in. I'm in eastern Nebraska. If I go to western Nebraska, it'll probably take three or four times as many acres for the sheep as it would here in eastern Nebraska. That's just the way the pasture is. And in your state, it's going to be different than my state. So it's not only by state by state, it's county by county. So you need to talk to your extension agent, right? And what you need to find out from your extension agent is what is the stocking ratio what is the carrying capacity or the stocking rate in your county for pasture all right so they'll know they'll give you a rough idea that in your county your carrying capacity or your stocking rate has a set number and it's going to be it, they're going to vary a little because it depends on what kind of pasture you have and this and that but they'll give you a basic good idea that's going to get you started so what you need to ask for don't ask them, how many sheep can I put on an acre? Don't ask them that, all right? Ask them what the stocking rate or the grazing capacity is for one animal unit. Is it one acre per animal unit, two acres per animal unit, five acres per animal unit? Ask them that, because then they think you know what you're talking about. Versus if you walk in and just say, how many sheep can I put? They don't even know what you're talking about. You ask them about an animal unit, that's what they can relate to. So it's an animal unit. So now what's an animal unit? Ah, now we get down to how many sheep you can put on an acre. An animal unit is basically the simple way to make these decisions. Whether it's a cow, sheep, goat, horse, llamas, a pack, whatever you've got, we go by animal units. And an animal unit is 1,000 pounds. That's an animal unit. So if I got a thousand pound cow, I got an animal unit. If I've got her, if, if she has a 500 pound calf with her, that's a half an animal unit. If I got a 1500 pound bull, it's one and a half animal units. All right? So, thing that does are cheap. They are not going to weigh as much as your Katahdins, their Dorpers, and your other hair sheep like that. The painted desert sheep are a little lighter. Some ewes are going to go over 100 pounds. A lot of ewes are going to go under 100 pounds. I usually stick with 100 pounds. I call it 100 pounds for you. The rams will be a little bit more. So basically, if an animal unit is one 1,000 pound cow, it is 10 100 pound sheep. Simple as that. So if your county extension office tells you, all right, where we're at in our county, depending on the pasture, how good a quality, poor quality, blah, 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 and all the deals, because there's nothing set in stone, that the rate for the stocking rate is 
one animal unit for every two acres. All right, let's just go with two acres for an animal unit. So basically that means 10 sheep, it's gonna take you two acres to do 10 sheep. That's kind of the easy way to do it. If it's gonna take you four acres for an animal unit, it's gonna take you four acres to handle 10 sheep. Now, we also have to remember, you got ewes that are having lambs. That's gonna bring them up a little bit, but the lambs are only, in my case, the lambs are out there for maybe a couple months and then they're gone. So I don't have to, I, you know, if, I, if I've got it, if I'm saying it's a 100 pound ewe and they only weigh 80 and I got a lamb that weighs 20 when it's with it most of those two months, it's still, we're pretty close. So that's how you decide how many sheep per acre. Now, how long can you keep them on a pasture? Boy, that one you're gonna to have to figure it out just the way I am. I'm gonna to have to figure it out. I know I have about three acres and that's three acres is what I'm using for my use. Don't mind Cash, he must, I bet he's playing with the babies. The lambs like to get on the other side of the fence, Cash plays with them to the fence. Uh, anyway, so in my situation, I got three acres, I got 10 ewes, but I'm on year four of putting sheep here, but I didn't always have the same acreage. I sometimes, I didn't have that far over there, but sometimes I use this over here. Sometimes I had 15, 16 ewes, now I got 10, and oh, I, over here I only had six. So it varies for me. So I'm gonna be learning this next year just how you would if you're starting out because even though I've had the sheep here for these, I haven't done it this way. The three acres that I use for right now 10 ewes, there'll be 12 ewes next year because I'm keeping back two lambs. Right now it's divided into three pastures, one small one and two bigger ones. I'd say I got a maybe a half an acre in that one pasture, something like that, whereas the other two pastures have two and a half acres between them. When I'm done with my fencing, instead of three pastures, I will have six, and the potential to do seven, because all I have to do is close a gate, and I can take one of the pastures and turn them for a whole pasture into two smaller ones. So now I'm gonna be down to six pastures and three acres. My pastures are all gonna be about a half an acre. One's gonna be a little smaller than the other, but we're gonna be close enough anyway. So now I'm gonna have half acre pastures. Now the question is gonna be, how long can I leave them? And I can't tell you that because I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to leave mine. And now when I am starting this, I'm gonna start it in July and August when the rain quit, the pastures quit growing. So I can't tell you anything until probably about 18 months from now because then I'll have been through a whole season of rotating through my six pastures, I'll have a little better idea. I got a little idea. I, I watch a video from a lady that raises sheep, and in one of her videos, now she has uh, dorpers, so they're quite a bit bigger, but in one of her videos, she mentioned a pasture roughly about 80 by 200, and she put 25 dorpers there for 48 hours and moved them, all right? She's got probably better grass than I have. I'm gonna say she's probably got better grass than I have. But if she had 25 dorpers and left them for 48 hours, I gotta be able to figure I can take 10 painted deserts and leave them for two or three or four days, at least. Even though though my grass isn't as good. But again, I don't know that for sure. I'm kind of guessing. So we'll see what happens next year. But my idea is if I can, in my half acre pastures, if I can put my ewes in a half acre pasture and leave them for three or four days, and I've got six pastures, that means it's gonna take anywhere from 18 to 24 days to get back to that first pasture. Three or four days might be right. And it, cause, again, I've done a lot of reading and watched some videos in this last week. And I, I watched one guy and said that when you put the sheep in the pasture and the first manure hits the ground, which is two minutes after you put them in the pasture, they will start, your worms, your worms, eggs in the manure can start hatching. He said in three to 10 days. Is that accurate? I don't know if it's accurate or not. I don't, I don't know him from Adam. He's a guy on the internet. I'm, like, I'm a guy on the internet, so I don't know. But if he's halfway right, that three to 10 days is when the first eggs hatch and come out on the grass, to me, that sounds like, well, good. If I can move my sheep on the fourth day, then the odds are, and they're not gonna come back for 18 to 24 days, the odds are pretty good they're not going to pick up 
any of the larva that's hatched from the, on the worm eggs, and I should break the cycle. That's the way I'm looking at it. Check back me in about 15, 16 months from now, and I'll tell you if maybe that's going to work. We'll find out if it's going to work or not. But basically, go to your extension office, find out how many acres for one animal unit, and then start doing some math. All right? And that's basically the way you're going to get the whole thing figured out. Let's go see what Cash is doing. Hang on. He seems to be, he has fun with the lamb sometimes. Yeah. Make everybody move, huh? There he goes. You like playing with your lambs, huh? Yeah, but you're making a lot of noise and I'm trying to make a video. All right. So that gives you your rough idea, guys. Go to the extension office, find out how many acres for one animal unit, and see, they're also gonna know by what part of the country you're in. Some places you pasture, I pasture May to November, and that's it, that's all I have. I gotta feed hay the rest of the time. So there's some parts of the country they're pasturing 12 months out of the year, or 10 months out of the year. So your local extension also know that. They'll tell you how many acres per animal unit, and you know now that an animal unit is 1,000 pounds, you know roughly how much your sheep weigh, that gives you a rough idea that should be used like this, 10 U's should make an animal unit. If you go 10 U's to an animal unit, I think you'll be in pretty good shape. All right, next week, <laughs> we wean. It's gonna get real noisy around here, at least for two or three days, depending how fast everybody comes pick up their lambs. But either way, it's gonna get noisy. I have the two U lambs that I'm keeping, they will stay with their mothers. I, I'm not going to bother to wean them. I'll leave them with their mothers. They can just stay out there and uh, we'll wean them, I don't know, September, October, something like that. Moms will wean them. I'll just take them. I don't want to take them away. I want to take them away. Excuse me. I want to take them away at least two weeks before breeding. That way the moms and the babies get used to that. I don't want them all wondering where mom is or where baby is the day I put the ram in there. I want them, their, their attention is going to be on the ram, not looking for mom or not looking for baby. So we'll uh, see how that one goes. All right, we'll see you next week, and it's going to be kind of loud. <laughs>